Um, yeah, we'll do one of those as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, remember when we're trying to solve, we're trying to find our um, find our values for x. So the main important thing, like I said, we want to make here we already have this kind of factored out. So since I have these two terms multiplied equal zero, I can set them set them out to say tan of three x equals zero and tan of x minus one equals zero. Everybody follow me with that, right? Yes. All right. So now remember, I told you not to worry about this until we actually solve for um, solve for our value of x. So the next thing is now I need to find our value of x. So I'll say tan of x, um, well, and the one on both sides equals one. So what I need to do is I need to figure out when does tan of x equal one and when does tan, let's not worry about the three x, when does tan of x equal zero? So I'm going to take a look at my unit circle. And I know that for this first one, tan of x equals 1 at pi over 4. Why at pi over 4? Because remember, the angle at pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. And remember, tangent is y over x. So if I take this over that point, it is obviously going to equal 1, right? Yeah. The other point where it equals 1 is at 5 pi over 4, which is this angle all the way here, because that's a negative radical 2 over 2, comma, radical 2 over 2, right? And so what you guys could say is, you could say x equals pi over 4 and x equals 5 pi over 4. Now remember, if there's no restrictions, we can keep on going around our unit circle um, you know, infinite many times, which we call plus 2 pi plus 2 pi. And like I said, since we can go around infinite many times, the number of times we go around is what we're going to call n. Our, where n represents any integer. Now, one thing you guys need to remember, though, instead of writing it like this, we can write this a more simplified version. Because to get from this angle, pi over 4, to this angle, all I have to do is add pi, correct? Mm -hmm. So rather than adding, I, yes, I could include this angle and this angle, but really, if I go from pi over 4, if I just say x equals pi over 4, and then all I have to do is add pi, I get to my next point, which is a solution as well, right? So really what I can do is just say, it's pi over four plus pi, and then how many times, if I add pi again, I get back to my next solution. Add pi again, next solution. So then it's just really going to be pi n. So that's gonna be the most simplified version of writing my answer, make sense? Remember, n just tells you how many times, uh, represents any energy you're gonna multiply by. Now we need to look at when does tan of x equal, or tan of 3x equals 0? Well, we look at our points. And here we're going to be 1 comma 0. And remember, these two, they'd be, in, uh, be undefined. So at our two points are at 0 and pi. And again, we come up to the same solution. We don't need to write 0 plus 2 pi and then pi plus 2 pi, because really, if I just say tan, um, or what I, can, what I can say is, my two answers, tan of 3x equals 0, and then to get to here, it's just going to be pi. So what I can just say is, 3x equals pi n. Right? It could be, you don't need to write 0 plus 2 pi, because it's really just 0 plus pi, and then all you need to do is keep on doing is adding pi to get to your two points, right? Between these two points, these are our two solution points, when tan of, x, tan of 3x equals 0, um, between those two, you just keep on adding pi. So that's why I just multiply pi times my integer, and then I just divide by 3, and x equals pi n divided by 3. And that's going to be our two solutions wrap up, okay?